Hey, what's going on guys? This is Andrew Chicken and welcome back to another video. In this one, we are looking at the Darkness and Dragons update. Probably a reference to Dungeons and Dragons, it certainly sounds like it. Uh, but yeah, we're going over that patch today. The uh, patch stream was just yesterday, so they showed off all the new features and whatnot. And today we're looking at the patch notes. I'm going to be giving my uh, opinion on some of these changes, all of these changes. I don't know how many changes will be that interesting. But right off the bat, there is a new champion, Corvus the Magistrate's Blade. He has a support from what I saw in the stream, because I didn't see the entire thing. I only caught the back half when they were looking at Corvus. This dude looks really, really freaking cool. The aesthetics, like the art, the art team just keeps nailing it every patch. This guy looks insane. So, yes, the most difficult decisions test the, even the strongest of wills, but his will has never wavered, even in the face of seemingly unsurmountable odds. He is Corvus, the Magistrate's Blade. He is the son of... He is the son of Karn. Karn's the dude of the, the top of the Magistrate. He's the... This guy's an important dude, okay. As far as lore-wise, this guy's like... Uh, dad's son he's like a prince if this were a monarchy sort of that's pretty crazy okay so uh, but it's by his own merit that he earned the absolute loyalty of his men and instilled fear in his enemies so yeah he's a battle leader then charismatic leader and brilliant tactician he will stop at nothing to see his goals realized a peace to surpass that of the golden age all right i like that under the magistrate's rule okay within the near limitless energy of the abyss bent to his iron will, and those soldiers still loyal to his vision of peace, he is doing what no other is capable of. By his own strength, the resistance will fall, and peace will be forged for the realm's citizens with or without their co cooperation. Okay. That's interesting. So he's on the Magistrate, which some would call the bad guys in the Paladins. I don't really know exactly, <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, that's interesting. So lore-wise, this guy is a really, really interesting character. He's a battle leader, son of Karn, uh, who wants to quash the resistance and then have a big ol' grand peace. That actually kind of sounds like a decent dude. wonder how he got the abyss uh, bent to his will, but whatever. Anyways, he's a support. He has 2200 health. Uh, his weapon is an officer's pistol. Standard officer's pistol. That's interesting. Machine pistol, worthy of the magistrate, deals 70 damage every 0.7 seconds, so it's very automatic. Uh, kind of like a p -p 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 type thing. Has maximum ammo of 50 and is fully effective up to 110 units, so it sounds like one of Koga's submachine guns. Pretty much. <laughs> it really kind of looks like that, except with a bit more ammo, uh, and I don't think it fires as fast as the two of them combined. I don't really know. Uh, it'll definitely be an interesting weapon. All right, alt fire abyssal reconstruction. Target an ally to infuse them with the power of the abyss. <laughs> Healing for 350 over 0.5 seconds and then a burst of 800 health. So it sounds like a Furia heal. Has a range of 150 units, so it's one burst of 800 health and then 350 over 0.5 seconds. So. Pretty short bursty heal. It's like quick mass. It's 1150 health. So not that bad, it doesn't seem. And ability one, mark of fate. Target an ally who is to be marked by fate. This ability can be used through walls. Can only mark one ally at a time, has a range of 250 units. Marked allies receive 55% of the healing done to other allies. Interesting. So 1150 divided by two, if we do the quick math, that's... That's about 575 healing, or not 55%. Hold on, calculator time. Uh, screw quick mass. All right, here we go. That, 1150. So 632 and a half healing. I guess the half will just be rounded up. So 633 healing to the ally who has been marked. Directly healing a marked ally will provide increase the healing done to the marked target by 10%, so an additional 115. Uh, reduce the cooldown of Abyssal Reconstruction by one. That's the... Yeah, that's the healing ability. So reduce the cooldown of the healing ability when you heal the marked target. Okay, so you could put that on a tank, and then when you heal somebody like your flank or your damage champion, the tank will still get healed. And then if you heal the tank, you heal them for more. And yeah, that's interesting. So you can heal two allies at once, or you could put it on your flank, and then whenever you heal your tank, you also heal the flank a little bit. So it's like a Genos... It has the utility of the Genos heal with half of the burstiness of a Furia heal, except you have the full effect of the Furia heal on whoever you're healing directly, and then you get the Fury Hill plus 10% if you heal the person that has the thing that's the utility of... J oh, the possibilities with this guy. Oh, man. This guy, this guy is going to have some interesting gameplay. That actually sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> this, is, this is a really cool unique gimmick it looks like all right that's cool and the mark will bounce to the nearest ally should the marked ally die and will disappear on corvus's death so you just throw the mark out and if the person dies you don't have to put the mark on someone again it just goes to another random person okay or not a random person the nearest ally so if you're flank 
If two of your flanks are flanking together, one of them dies, the mark just goes to the other flank, and then you, you still heal the flank? Mm, not bad! Not bad! Alright, I like that. Ability to protection. Uh, or projection, rather. Project a manifestation of your will forward, piercing enemies, and stopping on collision with the environment or after traveling 150 units. Deals 450... or 450 damage? No, 400 damage, and slows enemies hit by 35% for 1.5 seconds. Can reactivate to teleport during flight and for three seconds after stopping. Ooh! So you can teleport to the thing that you throw. So you throw through someone, deal damage, then teleport behind them, and then still shoot them with your gun, and then kill... Ooh. Ooh. That looks interesting. I like that. And then his ultimate, Entropic Breach. I actually saw this on stream. Uh, I heard a lot of people saying it was like Sigma's ultimate from Overwatch. I don't play Overwatch, so I don't know what that looks like. But what I can tell you is the visual effects on this ultimate are fantastic. <laughs> it looks so phenomenal. It actually kind of gives me uh, Path of Exile vibes. It's like purple and all kind of mystic-y and ritual-y and runes and stuff. It looks like the Contagion from that game. Uh, but yeah. What it is, is it focus your iron will with an iron grip to channel the dark secrets of the abyss. Rise up into the air, so he flies, and then gain the ability to call down an abyssal strike that damages and slows enemies in an area. Can reactivate it to cancel. Cool. <laughs> so the damage you take is reduced by 60% while you're flying in the air, and you're immune to crowd control, so you can't be stunned out of it, you can't be knocked out of it. While hovering, target the ground to call forth an explosive of enemy. Or... <laughs> English. While hovering, target the ground to call forth an explosion of energy, dealing 15% of enemies' targets maximum health as damage, and creating a charged area that persists for 6 seconds. This area deals 6.25% of enemy targets maximum health as damage and 0.5 and every... Good lord! As damage every 0.5 seconds and slows enemies caught in it by 33%. So once you're in it, it's hard to get out, and let's, do, let's get out the calculator again. Okay, so that's 15% plus... 0.0625% of the enemy's health every 0.5 seconds, so that's 2 times per second, so that times 12. So, in total, if the guy sits in your ultimate for the entire 6 second duration, 90% of their health will be gone. No matter if they're a tank, no matter if they're a flank, no matter if they're ROM. That's pretty nuts. <laughs> that is that is absolutely nuts. So if you could, like, throw that on the ground, then Ceres holds into it, then Inara stun into it, you could possibly potentially wipe the enemy team if they're all just grouped up in that thing and 90% of their health is gone and then you're, the rest of your damage champions are shooting at them at the same time. This could be... I like this guy. I really like this guy. There's a lot of really fascinating gameplay you could do with this. So, yeah, one, it'll, I can't wait to see him in the PTS. I can't wait to try this guy out because this guy sounds like a metric crap ton of fun. Anyways, let's look at the talents. So, default talent is Dark Gifts. Your marked ally gains the following benefits. Reduce the effectiveness of crowd control by 15%. Reduce the cooldown of abilities by 10%. Inbuilt Kronos 1 into an ability? That's a first. I don't think we've ever seen that type of ability in the game before. That's really cool. Ooh! Increase reload speed by 15%. Gain 50 health every one second. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. So, it becomes more like a Genos heal in the sense that you get this amount of healing, but you also get buffs. So it's like a sort of a permanent Torvald bubble, because I don't think this thing ever expires until the enemy dies, or the teammate dies. So, the pocket potential for this? Because <laughs> imagine, you have a Genos on your team, you have a Corvus on the team with this talent, so you have a Genos heal with Luminary on, say, a Bomb King, and then you also have Corvus Dark Gifts on the Bomb King, so he's reloading, plus the reload card in his loadouts, plus reduce all the cooldowns by 10%, so your Grumpy Bomb, your Poppy Bomb, more of that, and reduce the effectiveness of crowd control, so if you're going up against Stun Domba or something, and you have Resilience 3, <laughs> this could be insane. Wow, I can't wait to try that. Alright, Stunning Visage. Enemies hit by a projection are stunned for one second, and any enemy caught in between your projection and you when you teleport takes 600 damage. This looks like it's his damage taunt. So you throw the knife thing, uh, and then they're stunned, so they can't move. Then you teleport, they still can't move, so they were caught in the path, and then they take 600 damage, so that's a 1000 damage burst. 
and you're also moving them, or you're also moving around, so you're bamboozling, and they're stunned, so another enemy could come in and just, or another teammate could come in and swoop the kill, so, oh, yeah, that's an interesting damage down. All right, and then level eight, spreading influence, decrease the percentage of healing given to marked targets by 15%, but you can have two marks out at a time, so it'll, instead of being 55%, it'll be 40%, so uh, let's do the quick maths again, 0.4 times... Uh, 1150. 460. So you'll get 460 total health uh, with this talent if you're one of the teammates that has the projection on it. But you can heal two people. So say you have two flanks. You put one on one flank, put one on the other flank. They both get healed. Easy peasy. Interesting. All right. Uh, cards. Nice card art. I'm not sure if I really want to go over these because these are kind of boring. Uh, I, I, of course, I will be linking this in the description, the patch notes. So if you want to look at all these cards, uh, then you, you're more than welcome to. But, I mean, usually cards in the game are generally pretty this, much the same. Like, yeah, there's increased maximum health, gain shield after dropping low health. Like, a lot of these are pretty much copy-paste from other champions. So, yeah, links to this will be in the description if you want to check it out. But we're going to move on past this to the skins because I love skins. So we have Pyre Lord Magnus. This is a direct purchase Corvus skin. So already right off the bat, right out of the gate, there's a Corvus skin. And I have to say from the splash art, let's, uh, can we click on this? We can't click on this, but uh, I I'll have it up on the screen in the video editing. So this looks pretty fantastic. It kind of reminds me of the, uh, like the Christian Terminus or Crusader Terminus or whatever it was, uh, the Atlas skin with like the horse on top. I'm forgetting all of these names, but it kind of reminds me of that. Uh, he has a really, really cool looking helmet on, I have to say, I like that. This looks pretty cool. So yeah, nice to have a skin for him right off the gate. Uh, that's pretty nice. Alright, and then uh, some recolor, so you got a blue recolor, you got Abyssal Acolyte, I assume this is, yeah, this is through the Season Pass. So, yeah, if you have the Season Pass, you get another skin, that's cool. And then Golden Corvus, yes, very nice. Alright, so then Battle Pass, Darkness and Dragons. I think this is a Draconic themed Battle Pass by the looks of things. So, Battle Pass format changes, let's see. Increase the total battle pass levels from 80 to 120, so it's uh, a longer battle pass. Added a new chest and additional rewards to both tracks. Abyss Destruction. Oh! So there's a new chest that's not a gold chest or a diamond chest. So for us old veteran players who have all the stuff on the diamond chest and gold chest, like I have at least three of both chests sitting around that I can't open. So instead of having one of those, uh, or I think in addition to those rather, there's a new chest, which we can actually get new skins from. So that's that's a great change. I like that. So, so for the people who don't have all the stuff in the diamond chest, you'll still get that, I think. And the gold chest or whatever they decide to put in there. And you also get this new chest with some new skins. So that's really cool. I like that. Increase the total number of challenges from 50 to 60. Title rewards are now granted at 30 and 60 completions. Nice. All right, and I don't see any changes to the amount of crystals. So I assume the amount of crystals is still the same in the battle pass. So, all right. So the instant unlocks. There is Draconic Fighter Victor. Is that this skin? Wait, that looks like Drogo's. What? That's Victor? Wow. Okay, that's an interesting take on Victor. Holy crap. He's like an imp. Ooh, that's cool. All right, I have to see that one in game because the splash art, I feel like <laughs> I feel like the splash art isn't quite the entire package. I really, I really, really want to see that one in game. But anyways, this is what you'll get if you instantly buy the battle pass. You also get the steel maw loading frame, so it's like a massive steel dragon's mouth. Kind of looks like a bear trap if it had teeth. So that's cool. And then scaled menace static avatar. So uh, yeah, if you like dragons, there's a dragon avatar and 50% experience and gold boost. So that's the same with every battle pass. All right, let's look at the rest of these skins. So, Scale Bane Strix. Looks like a dragon hunter type Strix. He's got a magnificent beard like me. Hey, <laughs> I like that. All right, now, yeah, he's wearing like a dragon thing. So, uh, kind of reminds me of that Tyra skin because I think she has like a dragon head helmet thing too. So, yeah, another dragon hunter in the realm. That's pretty cool. And that pistol looks fantastic. Uh, it looks kind of barbaric apocalypse but also fantasy style. It looks really cool. And I uh, can kind of see the rifle in the distance. That looks really nice. All right, then Draconic Enforcer Khan. Oh, they straight up turned Khan into a dragon. <laughs> wow. All right, that's fascinating. And then Soulfire Furia. Oh, that's a Furia skin? Oh, wow. I thought that was a... I thought that was just like a card art or splash art. That's actually a Furia skin. All right, that's cool. That's kind of a different take on Furia. She doesn't even have wings, it doesn't look like. So, unless... Oh, maybe the swords are the wings. The swords could be the wings. 
I don't know, but that looks cool. And then, all right, then the recolors, you got a blue version of Victor, you got a purple version of Strix, you got a blue version of Khan, and you get a blue version of Furious. That's cool. And then here's some sprays. You got Dragon Hunter, Furia. Uh, kind of, <laughs> that's kind of cute. Uh, you get these dragon horns and eyes and stuff, and you also get a, uh, a fart. You guys want a fart? They, uh, there's a fart in the battle pass. <laughs> all right, then a death stamp, you get a dragon egg. That's cool. And then some avatars. So you got a dragon opening his mouth, you got a dragon blinking, and you get uh, Furia looking stoic. All right, map update. Oh, yes, I saw this in the stream, too, when they were checking out Corvus. Uh, Magistrate's Archives, they've completely redesigned the map. I think they made it corrupted by the Abyss. Let's read the description. With this visual update, we really wanted to play up to the Magistrate and the Magistrate's Archives. The pastel blues and light heart of the feel of the original never... Or, pfft, the pastel blues and the light-hearted feel of the original never really felt like it belonged to the Magistrate. With the introduction of Corvus as a prominent figure of the Magistrate, we wanted to give the Archives a serious facelift and position it as Corvus's personal study. So this has gone from Torvald's place to Corvus's place. Cool. We've included brand new statues of both Karn and Valera. Ooh! As the legions have shifted over time, Valera's statue has fallen into disrepair while Karn's has been well cared for to this day. Throughout the level, though most prominently at the center of the map, we've included evidence of Corvus's obsession with the Abyss and the power it represents. We hope players will enjoy this upgrade in visual quality, as well as the lore we've done our best to inject into the level. And then we get a lot of screenshots. I'll go ahead and put them on the screen, you know, kind of big. This looks amazing. <laughs> it's like purple, Abyss covered. I like the darker tones with this. This looks really, really sick. I mean, I liked the original, but this is definitely an upgrade. And I can't wait to, like, actually check it out in-game and see the graphics for myself. Oh, that ball. Oh, wow. That's like a magical, like, abyss ball thing. <laughs> I don't know quite what it's called. There used to be a, a like, telescope there. Yeah, this straight up went from Torvalds to Corvuses. But yeah, that's a, that's a ball. That's cool. You like balls? Oh gosh, someone's gonna... <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, then we, finally we can see the two statues. So there's Valera, uh, as they said, it can, has kind of fallen into disrepair. You can kind of see it from the screenshot. There's a little bit of cracks and stuff on the statue. And then there's Karn. So kind of two different uh, peoples. I really like it. This looks really cool. And I also like that they changed even the time of day. It's uh, It went from daytime, you know, kind of cheery, happy, to either sunrise or sunset. It's orange, it's red, it's... Uh, menacing. <laughs> it's really cool. Alright, general. User interface updates. We have updated various minor UI elements uh, that were out of date and did not match our current UI. So more polishing and uh, bringing things up to date. So that's good. Alright, golden skins. Golden Grok. Yes. For the Grok mains out there, including myself. He's technically my main healer. I got him to level 50 first. Um, yeah, Golden Grok is out. So that's pretty cool. Uh, looks like it's the only golden skin besides Corvus's. And then, ooh, a new mount. Winged Drake Mount. This is like a four-legged dragon as opposed to the two-legged dragon that we already have in the game. Um, from the splash art, this looks pretty darn cool. I really like this. How do you get this? Uh, the new Dragon Rider pack. Okay, it's a new pack. So it includes 5 million battle pass experience if you want to rush your battle pass, as well as 200 crystals to spend on additional content. It doesn't say how much it costs, so I don't really know. But... Okay, so, uh, direct purchase accessories, Re music packs, uh, remix music pack, okay, where's the Siege of Ascension Peak music pack, I still want that in the game, high res. I will pay you actually money, or I will pay you actual money to put the, uh, the, the Siege of Ascension Peak music in, I want that pack so bad, <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyways, avatars, there's some avatars and stuff, you can't really see it right here, these are just direct purchase accessories, so I think they're already in the game. So I'm just going to scroll through these. You can read these. Again, link is in the description. All right, Ranked Split 2 is here. So we're going to have to uh, do our Ranked matches again and, you know, re replace and Ranked and do all that stuff, which is fun. I'll probably stream that. Uh, and then there's some new awards, I guess. Play five Ranked matches, you get a gold chest. And play 25 Ranked matches, you get this avatar, which is Ash, kind of looking... <laughs> All right, and then uh, ranks have been soft reset, so not a hard reset. You'll still probably end up somewhere where you ended. Uh, like uh, I ended in Diamond 1, I'll probably end up in Platinum or something like that. So, all right, ranked map rotation. So, reserved maps, Shattered Desert is out of the rotation, thank God. Timber Mill is out, okay. Frozen Guard, I think that one's new. And then Warder's Gate still out. So, and then they added Jaguar Falls back in and Fish Market back in. So, 
yeah, yay, I like Jaguar Falls. I don't like any of these maps, except Timber Mill is kind of fine. Uh, <laughs> can't believe I said that, but these are actually worse. Sadder Desert, Waters Gate, I hate those. All right, now on to the balance. <laughs> this is the interesting er part, in my opinion. All right, so, uh, Kinetic Burst for Ash. Uh, you can toggle it, similar to Shaolin's Crippling Arrow. This has actually been something that should probably been in the game a lot earlier. This is something from the AOC that they suggested. Uh, so you can toggle it on and off. So if you want to save your ability, uh, instead of just having to expand it, then shoot farther away. Like, say someone's farther away, you want to, and you already had your thing charged up, you don't want to use it because they're too far away, you don't want to advance because you'll die. Uh, you just want to poke at them with your range. You can now do that by simply right-clicking to toggle it, and then you're back to your normal fire. So that's really nice. I like that change. It'll make her a lot easier to play. And just uh, kind of a nice, you know, quality of life thing. Okay, Atlas abilities. They reduce the time to charge the Chrono Cannon, so you can get your full sniper shots faster. That's good. It still takes 1.4 seconds, which is a while, but hey, I am not mad. I like the change. And then setback, you can set back people more often by two seconds, so that's good. All right, Fernando, ability. Is this another AOC change? They increase the damage from 200 to 400. So uh, if you like charging into enemies, you know, get that knockback card, you, you like to do damage with the charge and kind of bamboozle people, uh, you can do that better now because you'll be killing them more with the charge, so that's good. Alright, Imani. We're on to the damage champions already, so not too much in the front line, uh, other than just some nice quality of life changes. That's good. Alright, so Imani. Abilities. Frost Bomb. They reduce the cooldown, so you can use that a lot more often. Inferno Cannon. You can use that more often. Imani was already cancerous enough with the Inferno Cannon, but now she's even more cancerous, so thanks, hi -res. Uh, Shaolin. Talent. Sand Trap. They increase the damage. I think that was the Explosion one, I'm pretty sure? So... Yeah, more increased damage on that, which uh, I guess makes Shaolin a bit stronger in that regard. And Desert Silence, they increase the silence duration. Ooh, all right. So, yeah, there's Desert Silence. Wait, why is that in the abilities? Wasn't that a talent? Because the silence is different from the cripple. So, I think that, should, I think that was a typo. I think that should have been in talents. I don't know. But they basically brought that back up to two seconds. So, uh, yeah, uh, just buffs for Shaolin all around. All right, Strix, Cooled Mags. Increases the time between ammo regeneration ticks. So, okay. Infused Crystals. Reduce maximum ammo increase. So, less ammo for Strix now. That's unfortunate. Vivian, Opportunity and Chaos. They didn't quite rework the talent. But they nerfed it, so that's good. That's a step in the right direction, because this talent is the dumbest talent in the game, in my opinion. Because all you do is hold left click, and you get damage. Like, it's, there's no skill involved in that. So I'm glad to see that they're nerfing that. On to the support. We're uh, just whizzing through these, and I'm glad to see BK didn't get nerfed. Because I was kind of worried. Because <laughs> I've been seeing him banned and ranked a lot. I was worried he'd be on the chopping block, because he's my main. He hasn't been touched in years, except for some slight changes. So... Yeah, I'm glad they didn't nerf him. <laughs> Get his nerf Cassie, please. Okay. Support. Fury of Pyroblade. They reduce the time until Wrath starts to decay, so your Wrath will be decaying slower now. Uh, rather, uh, quicker, actually. Quicker. So it'll decay quicker, and then it'll decay quicker. So you won't be doing as much damage with Furia, I guess, or you have to heal more. Uh, Light of Dawn. They reduce the shield given to allies, because apparently that was too overpowered somehow. Okay. Grok. Spirit's Domain. They increase the healing... Yes! They increase the healing per second on Spirit's Domain! Yes! The Grok buffs! Ah, I love it. I love to see the Grok buffs. Grok is my favorite healer, by far. And I'm glad to see that Spirit's Domain is getting buffed. So, now if you have that plus the totem on somebody, it'll be even, even stronger. So, nice to see that. Io, they increase the healing every... 0.15 seconds to 150. So they buff the healing up on Moonlight, and then decrease the amount of movement light you have. So it's a bit burstier, but you can't do it for as long. All right, and then Moonwalk. Increase Moonlight scaling, capacity scaling, uh, so you get more Moonwalk or Moonlight from the card. Okay, then Genos. Uh, they did decrease the range scaling, so you can't heal as far. Or is that the one... Light Years. Is this the one for the Void Grip or for the heal? I feel like it's for the heal. I'm pretty sure it's for the heal. Let's look it up. All right, so yeah, it is the range of the Astral Mark. You can see it right here, Light Years. I kind of zoomed in. Oh, yeah, here it is. Increase the range of Astral Mark, so that's going down quite significantly, so you're not going to be able to heal from across the map like you would be before, which I guess is kind of fair, considering he can heal through walls, so uh, interesting change. All right, so for Maldamba, they changed the Mending Spirits, so they actually buffed the base healing. Uh, or rather, just the burstiness of the base healing. So they change it from 250 every one second for five seconds to 315 every one second, but they took a second off the duration. So a bit burstier now, and then the total healing goes up from 1250 to 1260. So just a slight buff in the healing. 
but you get it a lot quicker, which is good. And then the Gord, they increase the healing, or they increase the damage per tick and the healing per tick. So just straight buff to the Gord by five for each category. So Maldama's gonna be healing for even, even more now. And then Spirits Chosen, they increase the initial heal from 200 to 220. So Spirits Chosen got buffed, Mining Spirits got buffed, so Spirits Chosen is kind of, uh, I guess, a better talent overall now. I wouldn't say it's better than the Gord talent yet. Uh, we'll have to kind of wait for the PTS to see that. But it is nice quality of life changes, so that's good. And then finally, the last change as far as balance goes, Pip. They removed the midair inaccuracy. So now if you're trying to jump and hit your allies to heal them with combat medic, or you're trying to jump and deal damage to hit your enemies, uh, you won't be any inaccurate. So that's nice, I guess. <laughs> All right. And then finally, there's a bunch of bug fixes, which I will leave these uh, for you to look at in the description below, because a lot of these are kind of just uh, small, like this one for Drogo's updated the description of Fire Spit. Uh, you know, just a, a few minor issues. So, uh, anyways, that is the end of this patch review. Ultimately, I actually really, really like all of the changes so far. Like, I, I, I agree with pretty much every single one of these, which I'm surprised, because I remember for the Season 3 review, I actually didn't like a few of these changes. So, uh, I'm surprised to see that these changes all seem pretty good, pretty positive for the game. So, I can't wait to see uh, when the PTS drops, uh, how all these changes will affect the game, how much fun Corvus will be. So, yeah, once the PTS drops, I will be making a lot of new content on that. So, anyways, that is going to be the end of this video. If you guys enjoyed this patch review, then make sure to drop a like on this video, subscribe, and uh, turn on notifications, do all that YouTube stuff. And also join the Discord server down in the description if you want to talk about the new patch, if you want to make some new friends, play some Paladins, or other games. We also have, like, Warframe and stuff on there. So, uh, yeah, that's the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you all next time. Peace out.